Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I call Ginny Salisa. Thank you, Mr. Speaker, for this call on the Education Amendment Bill. This is a deeply concerning bill to us, Mr. Speaker. This legislation would, amongst other things, see the sci fi scenario of Kiwi children as young as four years old plonked in front of the um, computer screens alone for all of their learning, Mr. Speaker. It was bad enough allowing charter schools with, to be established with no um, uh, involvement of registered qualified teachers. But this legislation, Mr. Speaker, it will take it one step further because it will allow our children as young as four years of age to be taught not by human beings, not by fully qualified registered teachers, but it will allow our children to be taught without any teachers whatsoever. I am sure many of us as members of this House would probably think back and remember some of the most influential people in our lives have been teachers, most of them registered qualified teachers. Mr Speaker, another of the concerns we have, Labor, New Zealand First and the Greens, as we sat through the Education and Science uh, Select Committee. We heard hundreds of submissions, Mr Speaker, from a lot of key leaders, from teachers, from uh, professionals, from the Children's Commissioner, um, and from principals. A lot of these submissions, though, Mr Speaker, hardly any of them have been taken into account. When you look at the bill now and you read this current bill that we have in front of us after the Select Committee, Mr Speaker, it has hardly changed and it certainly hasn't taken a lot of those submissions into account. The Education Amendment Bill refines the education system. It is an education system. We are a world-class um, education system. It was well suited, though, for the 20th century. We had a lot of hopes for this Education Amendment Bill. We had hoped that it will bring our education system into the 21st century, but the one, the bill that we have in front of us, does little to bring the education system into the 21st century. Mr Speaker, we believe that the government should be focused on ensuring that every child, that every student in Aotearoa, New Zealand, attends a school, a great school, preferably their local school, um, and that every student uh, achieves the best of their abilities, that they actually can uh, realise their full potential. Unfortunately, Mr. S Mr Speaker, this is not currently happening right now in Aotearoa, New Zealand. I can tell you, Mr Speaker, this new system that we have, especially if the bill is to be passed and we indeed see a lot more of our students from age four upwards not even need a teacher, what it would mean is that a lot of our, uh, of our students would need to know how to read. They would actually be able, they should be able to read so that they can learn themselves when they're looking at these computer screens. But can I tell you just a very short story from South Auckland, Mr Speaker? One of the things I do when I go around my local schools is I talk to principals, I talk to teachers, and I ask many of them the same question. When five-year-olds enter your school, what kinds of skills do they bring in with them? And the consistent answer I hear from our teachers and our principals is many of these students, they come, they don't know what their um, colours are. They don't know A to Z, most of them, many of them, and many of them don't even have vocabulary. But what really hits home for me is when they tell me that many of these kids don't even know how to speak one language. What I mean, Mr Speaker, is these kids, if they are Tongan, born here, many of them come into school, they don't speak Tongan fluently, they don't speak English fluently. Similarly, if they are Samoan, and similarly, if they are Māori or Cook Islander. And a lot of our Indian kids, unfortunately, the same thing. And what the teachers tell us is it makes it so much more challenging for them to teach these young five-year-olds when they do not have a core language to teach from. Mr Speaker, our kids need to be literate. If we are to expect our children to be able to teach themselves from computers, as this legislation will allow with the cool community of online learning, how are we going to expect many of our kids who do not even speak 
one whole language to be able to succeed like other five-year-olds. Mr. Speaker, cohort learning, having our children start school as early as age four was one of the issues that teachers and parents said they do not agree with. When we look at other developed countries, many of them don't even start school until kids are six years old or seven years old, and yet New Zealand are proposing that we should allow our children to start as early as four years old. Mr Speaker, when we ask the officials to please explain why is it that we're looking at allowing our children to start that early, it seemed to us in the committee that the uh, explanation was that it would be a cost-saving measure. Mr Speaker, saving costs, cutting costs, should not be a good enough reason for having our children start school as early as four years of age. Mr Speaker, another of the issues that came up were from rural um, communities, teachers from the rural communities, as well as the rural women of New Zealand. What they told us was, and I quote, that they're very disappointed. There is no mention in this education amendment bill that it will be addressing inequalities in the current education system and the issues that they are facing in rural communities in low decile rural schools. They asked, why don't we address those issues first before we go addressing allowing communities of online learning to be um, a feature of the future. They also told us that they saw when online uh, learning schools were allowed, they saw them, rural schools, being affected. They told us that in the last 15 years, so many of the schools in rural communities are already closed and they saw that communities of online learning would affect them because when you, don't have, when you actually have a decrease of 20 students per school, that is one whole teacher that they, would, that they see going. And they see even more of the rural schools being closed down because of the availability of these community of online learnings. Mr Speaker, as I said earlier on, the Labour Party, New Zealand First and the Greens, as well as hundreds of our parents and our teachers and our community leaders, uh, educational experts and advisors are very concerned about this passage of this educational bill. Labour strongly oppo opposes this bill. And Mr Speaker, I know that the Minister of Education, uh, Honourable Hekia Parata, is about to leave uh, in the next few weeks, but Mr Speaker, that shouldn't be the reason why we're rushing through uh, passing of this legislation. Uh, similar to what my colleague, uh, the uh, Chris Hipkins, said earlier on, forgive me, Mr Speaker, when uh, the uh, Children's Commissioner came to present to us, he actually put up a stop sign, a red stop sign, and he said to the Education Select Committee, we should stop this uh, education uh, amendment bill and what we should do is we should go and consult with the people that it would affect most, meaning the children. It is our children that will be affected most by this education amendment bill. And Mr Speaker, we have not even had a full consultation with our children to ask them for their opinion on how this education amendment bill is going to um, influence them, affect them in the long term. Mr Speaker, we are strongly, strongly opposed to this Education Amendment Bill. Thank you so much. Kia ora. Todd Barclay. Um, thank you very much, Mr Speaker. Um, it's a pleasure to rise in support of this bill. Um